Let's go over the Egyptian number system. Sometimes their numerals are called hieroglyphs, but I like calling numerals because that's what they use for numerals. So, Egyptian numerals. First, we'll go over some properties of them. The Egyptian numerals were, their number system was non-positional, which means no matter what order you write these in, it's still going to equal out the same number, which isn't something we're normally used to. And also, because it's non-positional, you could always make an argument that it doesn't have a base, but all of their numbers, or numerals, are some kind of multiple of 10. They're 10 to the something power, so we're going to call it a base 10 system. And write kind of, because, well, you could always make that argument that it's not really a base system at all. So let's go over what their numbers equal. Their number for 1 looks like a lot of cultures' number for 1, which is just that straight line. And it's a staff, or that's what it's representative of. Their number for 10, because we go by 10 every time, is a heel bone. So heel bone for 10. And what they do is, if they need 1,012, they put one number for 1,000, one number for 10, one and two of the ones for 12. They don't do the whole Roman numeral thing where they're constantly subtracting. They just write as many of these symbols as they need. They could write 11 heel bone, or they could write 11 staffs for 10, or they could write 11 staffs for 11, but they would much rather write a heel bone and a staff. So they don't really ever write more than nine of the same symbol, which that can get annoying for some of their bigger numbers. So this rope right here is 100. They have a picture of a flower for a thousand. So so 1,000 for the flower. They have a pointing finger for t uh, 10,000. and it can go it can be pointing either way. So, 10,000 for pointing finger. They draw either a tadpole or a frog for uh, 100,000. I prefer drawing the tadpole just because it's easier. So, sometimes you'll see a slightly different symbol than this, but that's generally what they use for 100,000. Alright, or frog here. But the frog isn't pictured here, because what we're going to use for this course is the tadpole. And then they draw a picture of a man, or it may represent a god for a million. So this one's actually kind of annoying to draw. Excuse the artwork, it's... The man always has his arms up. Give him a little heel there. That's generally what they draw for a million. Uh, I can't really draw very small. Man or God. Alright, so the way they represent numbers, like I said before, they just use the symbols they need for that number. For example, 112, they would need, well, they would need a rope for 100. They need that, and they need two of those. And like I said, they can write it in any order. They could separate the symbols right here, although they generally don't. Generally, if you have two of the same symbol, you write them all in a row, or you write as many of them in a, in a row as possible, or on top of each other, pretty close to each other, but it's not actually a rule in their number system. 